praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are live. Listen, um, like it, share it, don't like it, don't share it. Just completely and totally up to you. Um, you know, I would like to say, um, you know, we had a great influx of um, folks in the last few weeks that have needed to go to rehab. If you would like to donate um, to help us cover these intake fees, you know, I don't know of a family that is not impacted by addiction. Um, you know, we've got a very diverse church from young football players, uh, first responders, college students, um, a nurse practitioner, um, uh, young ladies, you know, working, you know, advancing their education in psychology. And they could just go on and on and on and jacked up, uh, ex jacked up. Not, I'm not jacked up anymore. I'm on the path of uh, completeness and wholeness with God. So, listen, I've been rebuked. <laughs> and I'm going to accept the rebuke. I need to see myself as God sees me, the imputed righteousness of God. I am a son of the Most High God. Um, so, um, you know, got a very diverse church, uh, but we are really involved in the addiction ministry. Uh, the, the last time I, I met with uh, Pastor Mike Signet Rally, he said that Shore Creek was such a unique church. And I guess I never really thought about it. Uh, you know, we're heavily involved in the addiction ministry. We um, keep seven to 15 people. I mean, it may be more than that. I'm going to be completely transparent. I don't keep up. Uh, three people this past week that we paid their intake fees, gotten into rehab, they heard about me. Uh, reached out to Short Creek Church, reached out to me. My, my cell phone number is the church number. And I got them in a rehab with, without ever meeting them. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty awesome. Um, uh, you know, sometimes people will reach out to me and say, man, um, um, you have no idea what you uh, did when you helped me get into rehab two years ago. And I don't even remember them. But if you'd like to, to go to shortcreekchurch.com backslash give, uh, I'll post a picture of the cash app. You can give by cash app or through that, and I'll post that in the comments. I, I guess I could do that now. So let me do that now, the giving uh, cop thing and everything, because, uh, you know, we do need your support. Um, you know, the, the God's kingdom will is done uh, through an obedient church. So, you know, we want to give you the opportunity to, to sow um, into, uh, into the work that we're doing here. Um, you know, we, I don't know, a thousand, maybe, I don't know how many unaddictive books we've got out there. And a lot of them have been purchased, but we are constantly uh, giving those books to faith-based rehabs. I'm going to share this to just a, a couple of to the church page and a, a couple other groups and stuff like that so they can uh, get out there. And, and uh, I just want to talk about divine healing. Um, I want to talk about curses, um, um, divine healing, and uh, health because they all go together. Uh, so in, in uh, I, I had this message. Uh, Reese released his power. Powerful prophetic word Sunday morning. I didn't preach. Uh, and then the Lord gave me another word for Sunday morning about the kingdom of God. You know, it, it, the, the kingdom of God. And um, so I want to talk about it. Um, you know, we're a little bit of an unusual church in the way that we teach. Um, you know, um, we are um, really, really, really big on uh, uh, preaching Jesus, um, the cross, and then just good orthodox doctrine, the, the, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed. We believe in the Trinity. Um, uh, you know, we reject ideas that, uh, you know, uh, uh, of certain Bible translations. We um, reject the idea that Jen Johnson, uh, her uh, calling the Holy Spirit like a blue genie. We reject, um, um, what's his name? I can say Kenneth Copeland when he said God was the biggest loser of all. Uh, we reject Bill Johnson's uh, denial of the hap hypostatic union. We And we're not saying these aren't our brothers in Christ. We're just saying, hey, we want to be 
rooted in orthodoxy. We want to be rooted in Jesus is the Christ, but we want to uh, follow uh, good biblical doctrine, which seems to be um, a little bit odd in some of the camps that we run in. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, we're all at different levels. And I get that, man. I, I ain't got it all figured out yet. And, and I'm working and I'm, um, working hard to, uh, um, to, to follow the Lord and understand the Bible. There's so many things that, that I thought I was right on years ago that I've come to realize that, no, man, you're not right. You, you've made some mistakes. You've made some errors. So, um, you know, I I want to be humble in my approach at doctrine, but when bad doctrine's there, when when you look at the Passion Translation and and Brian Simmons said he was taken to heaven and seeing John the twenty second chapter, that makes me uneasy on the inside. And then some of his other comments that he's made uh, makes me really uneasy and the the cat curves and stuff like that. So we want to try do our best to at Short Creek. Now listen. I'm not trying to pastor your church. You need to lean on your pastor. And listen, if you don't physically attend our church now, if you can't and you're out of state and you can't find a home and you're watching us, you need to be looking for a home church, number one. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, it's just important that we have a home church. It's important that we have a pastor. It's important that we have physical contact. The called out assembly isn't um, uh, an idea uh, that we get together online. Is online a great tool? Absolutely, man. We reach people. Uh, it is online. These last three people that we got into rehab last week, all three young men living on the streets, banging dope. Now they're in a, a rehab, a faith-based life house deliverance center in Arab, Alabama. They are there hooked up to that church, getting the help that they need through Jesus the Christ, because of social media. So social media is important, but it does not take place of the church. If you have the ability to come to church and you don't come to church, listen, I am not your pastor. Let me say that emphatically. I am not your pastor. If you don't have the ability, and if you're watching online, hallelujah, watch online, connect with us. We'll do everything that we can to help you. But just know that, that it is important for you to have a pastor. So let's get into this. Curses, uh, divine health. Um, you know, it, th these things all run together. And I'm going to share this. I forgot to tag the page. Uh, I'm going to check into the Short Creek page. And then uh, we'll go ahead and tag. Um, I'll check in, get it on the Short Creek page. But let's get rolling. So I had... This sermon, we started, and, and people, they blow my mind when they say, y'all are just too demon conscious. You know, yes, we cast out demons because people have demons. Uh, and the mark of the kingdom of God is deliverance. Jesus told them, he said, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, by the power of God, you know that the kingdom of God is amongst you. So for the fullness of the kingdom of God to be demonstrated, deliverance is part of it. So is divine healing. So is speaking with new tongues. And, and I won't get into that debate because that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the kingdom of God. But people say you're too demon conscience. You know, if you go back in June the 2nd, I started a series on the gospel. I'm taking a couple of week break because we're getting ready for the election and I want people to understand what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God does not reside in Washington, D.C. The kingdom of God is a reality where there is a king of kings, a lord of lord, that bought you from death. He paid the price you could not pay. He took upon himself your sins, the wrath that you owed, he bore your cross so that you could be redeemed, restored, and reconciled with the Heavenly Father. That is what we preach at Short Creek Church. We're not demon conscious. We're demon aware. But I want to talk about this because in uh, many of my Pentecostal circles, uh, people, I believe, preach divine healing wrong. I just believe they do. 
I believe they preach it wrong. Uh, to start with, I want you to understand for healing, for miracles, for anything to flow, the object of your faith must be Jesus the Christ. Listen, it is only through intimacy with him the gifts flow. It's not about my gift to prophesy. And man, sometimes I get prophetic words that are like, whoa, I can't believe that just happened. From uh, Malik and Emily's uh, uh, going to have me, our first grandbaby, uh, Justice Michelle, going to have Marilyn and our, our first grandbaby, to the five women that are that will have uh, uh, babies by August of 2025. I called it. I didn't even know I was prophesying, but I said it and it came true. But it's not about my ability to prophesy correctly. The only way I'm able to prophesy, discern, give words of knowledge, lay hands on the sick, and man, I'm talking about heart disease. I'm talking about cancer. I'm talking about deaf ears open. I'm talking about backs that people are, are just, just can't even bend over because of the pain so intense where God touches them and heals them instantly. But it's not about that. The only way those things happen is if G Jesus is the foundation of our faith. Not Jesus a Christ. Jesus the Christ. Not, not the Muhammad Jesus. Not the Buddha Jesus. And let me tell you, man, you may be shocked to know that the majority of churches in America are preaching a Muhammad Jesus. The Roman Catholic Church preaches a Maham, a prophet and a teacher. Listen, he was a prophet, he was a teacher, but before he was all that, he was the anointed Messiah, Christ. All gifts have to flow through intimacy with Jesus. And so why do folks get physically sick? Uh, uh, to understand sickness, disease, illness, injuries, we must look intently at the fall of man. What brought sin into the natural realm, and how sin corrupts and destroys. Uh, so let's go through these things. Adam and Eve were disobedient. Uh, and because they disobeyed God by eating the forbidden fruit, uh, uh, fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they became an awareness of sin. Uh, they were evicted from the garden, and a cherub was placed over the garden. They lost their righteousness. Adam and Eve became aware of their nakedness, realized that they were no longer perfect. Their minds, their wills, their souls, their emotions were corrupted. And then shame come in. And then guilt. Then blaming. And then isolation. And then with Cain and Abel, we see jealousy, anger, rage, and murder in Genesis, the fourth chapter. There was separation from God. Uh, we've seen a transition where Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day where they were exiled from the presence of God outside of the garden. The ground was cursed. Now we got thorns, thistles, stones, bacteria, and viruses became a part of everyday life. Physical death. Adam disobeyed and died spiritually, and then physical death came to him and all of his descendants. Our genome, our very DNA, was corrupted. Then we got original sin. Adam's guilt was transmitted to all humanity. We're born spiritually dead. Then we see the judgment, the judgment of the serpent, the nakash, Satan, the woman, and the man were all judged and cursed. Men were consumed with making a living and became spiritually passive. And this is what we see an example of this with Ahab. Women were cursed to desire and dominate men, and they were put down with force. This is the spirit of Jezebel. Adam was a representative. Adam acted as a representative of humanity, and his sin cursed or affected all of humanity. Jesus Christ as a representative, Jesus but represents salvation for those who will believe, forsake all others, and follow him. But man, we got so many people that are, are uh, when it says look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, that means I stop looking to other thing, everything else. I stop looking to my career. I stop looking to my marriage. 
I stopped looking to my family. I stopped looking to my ministry. Jesus has to be the focal point. He has to be the very foundation. He is the chief cornerstone. Listen, if you're in carpentry, you know if you get that cornerstone off, the entire house is built off. We got an American church that the church is off, but God is calling us back. God is calling his church back with a supernatural outpouring. You know, we're part of an ambassador's network. Do you, know, you know how many Baptist churches that are right now that are experiencing deliverances in their altars? Demons are manifesting. Why? Because they allow the Holy Spirit to move freely in their congregation. And when the Holy Spirit is given freedom to reign, demons will emphatically manifest. Will emphatically manifest. But we've got to look to Him we got to believe, we got to forsake all others, and we got to follow him. Uh, tune in Sunday morning if you want to hear more about that in the kingdom of God. So we see a scripture in Galatians 3.13 that I hear uh, many of my charismatic brothers use to say that all curses have been eradicated. Um, and it talks about being redeemed from the curse of the law. Listen, the curse of the law was 613 rules plus oral rules that were impossible to perfectly follow. There's no way. The curse of the law was is you had to sacrifice something every year to cover those sins. That was the curse of the law. We've been redeemed from that. We've been redeemed from the law. We are no longer under the old law. We're under the new covenant. The old covenant has been completed. It was completed when the final sacrifice was made. His blood flowed so that we would no longer have to shed blood for the forgiveness of our sins. But does that mean all curses have been eradicated? Let me ask you a question. Do real Christians still physically die? And I'm asking, do they still die? Yeah. I mean, I do lots of funerals. Uh, 12, 13 saints of Short Creek that were devoted, loved the Lord, lived godly lives, lived a life of righteousness and holiness. Uh, they, they uh, I mean, just examples of the holiness of God. Uh, they died. Now, we have eternal life. We're not getting it. We're not longing for it. But we have eternal life. And we're, that eternal life is sealed with the Holy Spirit. We are spiritual beings have a, having a temporary, very temporary, life is but a vapor, natural experience. So eternity in super, and the supernatural is literally the innate characteristics of a God who is spirit is born in us according to Romans the first chapter. But physically, we still die. And is death not a process? I remember sitting with Brother White, uh, 96 years old. Man, I got a video on my YouTube channel where he is recollecting uh, his time uh, in the military during World War II out in California. And just clear, crisp, clear mind. But he looked at me one day and he said, uh, Pastor, he said, old age is a curse. Why? Because our bodies wear out. And everybody, I don't care how holy they are, their bodies just wear out because these bodies are still cursed. So let's go on. Do Christians, real Christians, still get sick? Yes. Are men still required to work by the sweat of their brow? You know, one of the things I really struggle with is men who do not accept their role, do not accept responsibility, who do not get out and work and earn a living. We have a blue collar church and we got some white collar guys coming up, but most of our church are, are coal miners, carpenters, welders, electrician, uh, pipe fitters. They work and they're still required to work because the bills are still coming due. Is childbirth painful and difficult? Man, I, I, I one just had a baby and got four women pregnant. I mean, Rachel, during the, her first trimester, now they got her on some medicine. I mean, she called me one day and she said, Daddy, I just threw up in my hands at work. She had to take extra clothes with her. 
Did we pray for her? Yes. Did God heal her? No. Do we see God heal folks all the time? Yeah. But because childbirth is painful and difficult, we still did see it today. Uh, if we can muster up enough faith, does that end all? It just doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, when we are relying on our faith alone, we're missing the object, the author and the finisher of our faith, and that's Jesus Christ. Are women still trying to dominate and control men? Hallelujah. Man, come on. You, you, we deal with women that have come out of uh, abusive relationships. I mean, really bad stuff. And so their idea is to dominate and to control the men so they'll not fall back into that relationship. But that is birth. That is part of the curse that we see in Genesis, the third chapter. Are men, in general, spiritually passive, uh, looking for the woman to lead spiritually? Absolutely. I mean, thank God for our godly women, but we need godly men to step up. You know, and that's what Short Creek does. We believe in empowering men to be the men of God, the spiritual leaders of their home. Is it possible for Christians to still sin? Hallelujah. <laughs> Do we still, as Christians, suffer the consequences of our sin naturally? Yes. Do we suffer naturally when we are disobedient? Are generational blessings real? Can Christians still be influenced by demons? Yes. 13 questions, 13 resounding yeses. Spiritually speaking, generational curses, assignments are real. So we have to look and we have to say, hey, reality is that, look, I'm still going to get sick. The object of my faith cannot be my faith. The object of my faith has to be Jesus the Christ. Does that ever prevent me from seeking divine healing? No, no, because he's a good, good father. But the process, the curse is still real. I don't care how much you proclaim it. I don't care how much you decree and declare it. We are still going, if you read the New Testament, as much as I read the New Testament, suffering in these physical bodies, suffering in this world that we're not a part of, is part of the Christian walk. Now, do we believe in healing? Yes. I could go on and on. Just this past weekend, a, a, a divine healing at a wedding, a soul come to the Lord, confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior at a wedding. Sunday morning, another divine instant healing. I could go on and on. We pray. We say, Lord, we have moved beyond believing. We know in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to every tissue in that back. To every nerve that is inflamed, I command you to go down. I can't tell you the number of times where we've seen actual demonic attacks on kids. And for no reason, fever spiked. Come running upstairs, rebuke the fever, and the fever goes down. Because you remember Jesus rebuked Peter's mother's funeral. You don't you you pray for healing, but you rebuke demons. So in times where people will be praying and get like intense stomach pain, intense uh, uh, female organ pain, get intense shoulder pain, intense neck pain. I mean, literally, I've seen people in services begin to get a choking sensation. So we believe, we believe, but we understand the reality that these bodies are still cursed and we're still going to get sick sometimes. 2 Corinthians 4, 11 and 12. For we who live are constantly being handed over to death because of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. God lets us experience problems so his divine life of Jesus can be manifested in our mortal flesh. It couldn't be more clear. Those who claim that faithfully following Jesus brings only blessings and never complication are simply wrong. God will allow hard circumstances in your life to force you to rely on Jesus. Hebrews 5, 7 and 9. While Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. We need to get back to some reverence for God. Even though Jesus was the Son of God, he 
learned obedience from the things he suffered. Whoa! Y'all ever read that scripture? I'm reading that in the NLT. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect high priest, and he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. Let me give you a, a practical example of this. The feds arrested me, May the 25th, 2007. May the 27th, 2007, Jesus came into a Walker County jail cell. You may think I'm crazy. Three days later, I walked out of there coming off high doses of Oxycontin, morphine, cocaine, methamphetamines, and a various other kind of drugs with absolutely no withdrawal system symptoms. But look, I committed those crimes. I repented, but naturally I had to go to prison. But in prison, suffering prison, suffering through that being locked down to where I could only concentrate on Jesus, where I could only concentrate on my relationship with him, that I could only understand his love for me. I suffered those 26 months. And now look at the people's lives who are changed. I can't even keep up with all the people we get into rehab. I, I, it's impossible. It's a, I, I can't keep up with it. I wouldn't even try because it's not about the numbers anyway. It's about that individual soul. It's about that individual person having an opportunity with God. So if the incarnation of God on this earth learned obedience through the things he suffered, how much more must we learn obedience by being determined to fix our eyes on the author and finisher of our faith as we walk out and walk through this wicked and cursed world? Because the world's still cursed. Like, I got a garden out there, right? I, I got to go out there and pull some weeds. Because what happens? If we don't pull the weeds out of the garden, the thorn that chokes the word out of us, right? <clears throat> Jesus asked that the cup be taken away from him in Luke 20, 22, 42. Yet the cup was not taken away. Nevertheless, his prayer was heard because his prayer was not to escape his Father's will, but to accept it. And that prayer was definitely heard. When we pray, it is not to change the will of God. It is to change us to accept the will of God. That Chinese missionary that gave his life for the Lord, did, is his curse over with? See, we got this Americanized gospel that doesn't apply to the rest of the world. We got it. Do, do I believe in healing? Look, I can't tell you enough. They told my mom that she, she uh, the bottom part of her heart wasn't working. Confirmed. Cardiologist confirmed. It's not working, Miss Green. Prayed for her. Two tests later, scratching their head, the bottom part of her heart's working. Biker church, man with spots on his lung. I mean, lung cancer, gone, healed. And these are recent. So yes, we believe in healing. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you if you muster up enough faith, you're always going to be healed. Because Jesus has to be the object of your faith. And sometimes it is that sickness. It is that trial. It is that trying. It is the consequence of our sin that leads us away from sin to Jesus Christ. Prayer and fasting aren't meant to manipulate God's will. They are and have always been being meant to mold us and change us to accepting God's will. Now, I'm not preaching a gospel of suffering. I'm proclaiming a gospel of abundance more than enough, more peace, more contentment, more happiness, more purpose, more fruit, and more manifest presence of God as we walk out this natural earth. Look, the kingdom of God has come, but the kingdom of God is not fully realized. See, the reason that we see uh, varying in terms between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, we are working toward the kingdom of heaven, but we are living in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. So we read James 1, 2 through 4. My brother, and count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work at that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. James regarded trials as inevitable. Sickness is inevitable. The testing of your faith. Did Timothy not have a stomach problem? Do we not see multiple in, uh, uh, accounts in the Bible 
were the disciples. Stephen was stoned to death. We need balance. We need balance. We need to understand that the abundance of God spiritually as we walk out this natural world. At the same time, trials are occasions for joy. Not discourage resign resignation. We can count it all joy during these trials because they are used to produce patience. Faith is tested through trials, not produced through tr by trials. Trials reveal what faith we do have, not because God doesn't know how much faith we have, but so that our faith will be evident to ourselves and those around us. Is your faith fickle? A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. James 1.8 And out of the NLT it says, The loyalty is divided between God and the world. And they're unable, unstable in everything that they do. And then I got a breakdown of, of, of Psalms 23. But I don't want to stay on here too long. So I want to go... To one scripture to talk about divine help. Uh, we're going to actually go to a couple. Of, we're going to go to Psalms 18 23. And we're going to start halfway through this. For your merchants were the great men of earth, for by your sorcery all nations were deceived. And now I want you to jump over with me to, to Galatians 6 and 7. Uh, Galatians 6, and we'll start. You're thinking, well, what has that scripture in Revelation got to do with divine help? Let's read verse 7. Do not be deceived. Galatians 6, verse 7. And I'm in the New King James Version, so we're going to stay there. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever men sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the house of the faith. So in Revelations 18.23, we see the idea of the merchants, the, 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 the big companies, the, the powerful companies, the pharmaceutical companies, the food companies specifically will deceive the people groups of the world by their sorcery. Uh, now we can break that down as it pertains to addiction, but I want to look as it pertains to food. We have the Food and Drug Administration. One of the things that I love about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is he is adamant about the food that we have in America making us sick. Look, I am a man that has struggled with his health because of his eating habits. People are like, well, one cookie won't bother you. It's better for me not to have the one cookie. Maybe you can have the one cookie. I'm not there yet. What I have to do is I have to eat strictly, and, 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 I'm, and, and maybe that's not you. Maybe you can have a piece of cheesecake. I can't have a piece of cheesecake. I'll end up eating the entire cheesecake. I'm praying that I will envelop the, the, uh, the, the power of God the gift of the spirit of self-control to such an extent that I can have one. But right now, I, I just feel like I'm in time in my life where I've just abstained. Uh, my diet is, is carnivore. Uh, I supplement with good electrolytes because you need to do that if you're doing a carnivore diet. Uh, the only non-animal uh, uh, ingredients that I use is I make some sugar-free barbecue sauce that's tomato-based. And then I also use dark chocolate cocoa powder. Everything else comes from an animal. This morning, I had sausage and eggs. I had coffee with dark chocolate cocoa powder, half and half, sweetened with sucralose, sugar-free. So, uh, But why do I say all this? Uh, let me just, man, I ain't trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. The idea that you can eat bad and run to the altar, eat bad, never exercise, don't take care of yourself, and run up to get prayer and God heal you. God can, and sometimes he does. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. A man that sows to his flesh will reap corruption, will reap sickness. Look, 
the curse of death still applies to us naturally. And when we exemplify the curse of death by walking in the flesh as it pertains to how we eat, we get sick. 80% of the sicknesses that we deal with in America. You want to you wanna change health care in America? Uh, get back to broccoli, sweet potatoes, and, and, and meat. You know, that's how we change the, the health care system in America. It's not, it's not more doctors. It's not more coverage. It, it's dealing with the problem. See, the world wants to deal with the symptom. I want to deal with the problem. The problem is, is if you eat like garbage, you're going to live like garbage. I don't care how much faith you have. I don't care. I don't care how much faith you have. But I, I can eat, and I've done this by example. Uh, I can go in and use artificial coffee creamer that is corn syrup solid based. I can do that for a day and literally my hands will turn red, swelling, arthritis. I could get into the science and maybe we'll start getting back into that. But the FDA, from the food to the drug, they're liars. Why are they liars? Because Satan is the little G God of this world. And just like the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, they operate under the system of this world. My, the kingdom of God, is not based in the Republican Party or the Democrat Party. And we've got to live a kingdom way uh, if we want to see help and healing. Does God still heal? Hallelujah. Do we still believe in miracles? Yes. Are there spirit of infirmities that need to be cast out? Yes. Is there a spirit of gluttony that consumes the pulpits in America? Man, absolutely. And you say, well, I, I can't be possessed. I didn't say, I said you can be influenced. Listen, if you're eating to the point that you know it's damaging your health and you cannot stop. I know this ain't, you know, name it, claim it. I know this ain't have enough faith. I know this ain't the woman. You know, it is the woman with the issue of blood. She knew what she needed to do and she was determined to encounter God till it healed her. Some of your eating habits are a sickness that you come into agreement with. They're demonically influenced that you've come into agreement with. Listen, I love you. I hope this helps you. God wants to heal you. God is a God of healing. God wants to heal you emotionally before he heals you physically. Because if he can heal you emotionally, the physical stuff will come in line. See, you're eating the way you eat because you're emotionally broken. Because you are leaning on food like an alcoholic would lean on alcohol. Like a drug addict would lean on drugs. You are leaning on food instead of leaning on the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Look, I, I'm, just, I'm just the kind of preacher that is always going to preach the truth. I love you. I'm always going to preach the truth. I don't care how uncomfortable it is.